Welcome everyone uh, to the metadata journey at Netflix. My name is Ashwin Ayer, um, and I lead the data discovery and governance engineering team um, at Netflix. I've been in the tech industry for about over 15 years now, uh, building both enterprise and data products. And I've primarily been at Netflix for over two and a half years, uh, building data discovery and governance solution. I am responsible and my team is responsible for building a cohesive metadata strategy across all data assets at Netflix. And I have with me Kevin and Alicia, who will be joining me in the presentation as well. Kevin? Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm a senior software engineer on the data discovery and governance engineering team. I've been at Netflix for about two years as well, but I've been in platform and data infrastructure for about a decade now. And I'm also a recent contributor to Data Hub OSS. Thanks, Kevin. Alicia? Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Johnson. I'm a PM in Netflix's platform product team, uh, supporting the infrastructure engineering organization. Um, I've also been at Netflix for about two years. That seems to be our magic number. Uh, and I do work directly with Ashwin's team, along with the broader data platform engineering organization, um, overseeing the data discovery and governance domain. I've spent nearly a decade in platform product management, and a little more than half of that has been focused on the data platform space, uh, with the majority of that time in the entertainment industry. And before I hand it over to Kevin and Ashwin to talk more about all of the nitty gritty technical aspects of our metadata platform and its evolution, um, I'd like to share a little bit of context on some of the challenges and the opportunities that we're tackling in this space and why it's an important investment area for Netflix. So at a high level, the data discovery and governance domain and its portfolio of products uh, focuses on enabling Netflix's data practitioners to easily find, understand, manage, and use data within Netflix's data ecosystem and really minimize the cognitive load associated with data management and discovery. At the end of our day, our goal is to drive the productivity of data practitioners and maximize the value of Netflix's data as a business asset. Let's get forward, Ashwin. So when we talk to data practitioners across the company, there are a few things that impact their productivity today. The first is that it's hard to find the right data. And right really depends on who is looking, uh, what they're looking for and why. Uh, a technical user's, uh, sorry, a user's technical proficiency in particular really plays a key role in discoverability. For example, a technical data practitioner like a data engineer might be looking for a table to directly query, while a business analyst may be looking to understand the impact or trends in a particular business metric. Also, what are they using it for? What are their expectations on quality and trust? Is this for an ad hoc query to sort of directionally inform a decision, or is this going to be a data source for a critical business dashboard or feeding into a machine learning model? And lastly, as our data grows, uh, we have increasing challenges around proliferation and duplication uh, of data that present challenges for discovery. Uh, next, once I do find data, it's often missing critical context to inform its usage. Uh, who owns the data? What's the source or the origin of the data? Um, what's the meaning of a particular attribute? Um, things like who else is using it and for what purposes? And then lastly, as we scale our capabilities to meet Netflix's evolving business needs and our systems evolve quickly alongside that, sometimes it can cause disconnects across uh, our user interfaces that lead to friction and fragmentation for users trying to accomplish a task end to end. And so there are a number of business needs that are really driving our investments in cataloging and metadata. I know we have a lot of metadata enthusiasts joining us today, and I suspect some of you may be facing similar challenges or opportunities in your own organizations. I roughly group these into two buckets, uh, operational efficiency and insights and innovation. Uh, operational efficiency is about ensuring the responsible and efficient usage of Netflix's resources. We do that through things like inventory and ownership, uh, establishing accountability and expectations for data resource management, 
Um, also things like cost efficiency and life cycle management that enable data ecosystem health and hygiene and things like cost attribution and optimization, um, which is increasingly important focus for companies in the current market climate. Um, also in an evolving regulatory landscape, ensuring that we're able to meet the needs around data protection and safeguarding data and mitigating risk. Uh, in the insights and innovation area, there are kind of two areas of focus for us currently. Uh, the first is self-service business analytics. So basically allowing uh, and, and enabling scalable access to business insights through investments in a semantic layer. And then the second, I know a huge area of focus for us and also many other uh, companies I'm sure who are joining today as well, uh, machine learning and AI, in particular the explosion in Gen AI recently and ensuring that we can meet the expectations and the needs for the business around things like model development, discoverability and governance associated with that as well. So with that context set, I'll hand it over to Ashwin to kick us off on the technical aspects of Netflix's metadata journey. Thanks, Alicia. So before we get um, a little deeper into the metadata journey itself, um, I just wanted to uh, take a couple moments and um, and quickly talk about uh, what our team does and, and how is it placed within the org and our responsibilities. Uh, so the data discovery and governance team is a quite a horizontal team within the data platform itself. Uh, we evolved originally, uh, as some of you may know, from MetaCat uh, as the metadata system of record to eventually building a full metadata platform. Um, and as we go through this talk, we'll uh, talk a little bit about our journey in terms of how we started from the big data warehouse to eventually evolved into other data platforms as well, and even beyond the data platform. And our goal is to really make sure that we are acting as a liaison between data platform and our partners in, um, in data and insights and analytics uh, to make sure that we are providing the right metadata glue to drive the leverage around cost, around semantic modeling, and, and around machine learning use cases. These are some of the components and services that our team owns. We build the Netflix data catalog which is the central metadata store uh, for all of the data entities at Netflix. Um, we had primarily built this. It was a custom data catalog. And we will also get into how we ended up choosing Data Hub uh, for implementation of our data catalog. We have the data portal, which is the unified front door for all the data practitioners at Netflix. We own the search layer uh, for powering uh, all of data entity search. It's a multi-terabyte search index. We, of course, have lineage to capture end-to-end -end lineage all the way from Netflix app to online to data movement to analytical systems. And a critical component to enable governance is the policy engine, which is built as a distributed state machine for rolling out data governance policies across all data ent entities. And some of these policies, um, uh, as you may know, will be around classification, retention, ownership, and as we are um, building more governance use cases, we are also looking at data quality and policies around data tiering. So let's take a step back and um, and talk about how did our metadata journey start, right? We Some of you may have read this blog already, uh, which is out there on Netflix tech blogs about MetaCat, which started as a federated meta store for the big data warehouse. Uh, this picture is actually directly taken from the blog. Um, and as you can see, uh, you know, it is a, a, a central meta store for all of our analytic, analytical data stores. But it, it also powered um, met, metadata querying in the query engine path. We also stored metadata around uh, business metadata over here, and it also enabled um, discovery use cases. But one of the, and, and in a similar way, we had meta stores built across our other data systems as well. For example, Data Movement Platform had its own limited meta store, and even our online data stores had um, had a meta store of its own. But one of the things that uh, came to a realization is that if we really want to enable central discovery and governance use cases across all data platforms, then we needed something which is more central in nature and actually provides the central inventory and metadata across all the data entities. With that said, we build the Netflix data catalog so to centralize metadata management across all platforms. 
NDC, as we call it, is the central store which captures inventory from all of these um, data platforms that you see, includes online, our S3 platform, workflows, uh, Metacat including, and our data movement platform. And as we are expanding to Alicia's point um, around semantic entities and machine learning models as well, we plan to centrally capture these entities um, in the Netflix data catalog as well, so that we are truly able to provide central discovery and governance capabilities. We also built the data governance policy engine to roll out policies across all data platforms. One of the key initiatives we took on last year was to also fix our ownership metadata and move it to an org-based model. The reason why we did that is because ownership is a key metadata that is, that is used to drive better accountability. You need to know the right people to reach out to for the right, um, right set of actions, including cost. And one of the challenges that we were facing in the past is through, uh, through an individual or self-ownership model, we were having a lot of trouble tracking the right owners, especially as people move teams or as people uh, left the company. So we really needed to make sure that the accountability actually stays with a team instead of an individual. And we have actually rolled out a, a new policy as well around data ownership, where we are able to centrally manage ownership in the Netflix data catalog using an org-based ownership model. So as I mentioned um, in the, uh, a few minutes back, we did uh, choose to adopt Data Hub uh, as the primary backing store uh, for our Netflix data catalog. So let's take a, a look at why was that the case? So when we initially built the NDC, our catalog meta model was quite rigid in nature. What this meant was if we were to add a new entity or add custom metadata about an entity, it actually required code changes on our side. And the reason for that was also because we followed the same meta model across all the entities, right? So we actually had to make sure that we, we actually required changes on our side to onboard any, um, any custom entity into the catalog. We also were only enabling entity onboarding using a connector-based model, not so much as a push-based model. And as we are expanding our catalog uh, to other entities like the semantic layer and machine learning, we also needed an extensible and self-serve onboarding and cataloging capabilities. So that was a primary requirement for us in ensuring that our team is not always on the hook for onboarding new entities, but we are actually able to provide the right set of tools for our partners to onboard entities themselves. We also needed first-class relationship and glossary support, especially as we are looking at the semantic layer. It's extremely important that our semantic layer and the underlying physical la layer are actually interconnected in, in certain ways. And for that, we need um, first-class relationship support. We could also benefit from the existing connectors that are available in the ecosystem. So we, we were looking at a few catalogs that were out there, and we wanted to make sure that we are at par with the industry. And Data Hub actually was serving our needs. And we, we actually made a decision to adopt Data Hub primarily as the backend store uh, for our Netflix data catalog. Our catalog actually is slightly um, unconventional in a way that uh, the, the NDC backend interacts with, uh, with a few UIs within Netflix. And there are, of course, programmatic access as well. So at this point, we are adopting the Data Hub GMS to ensure that you know, of all our backend uh, needs are taken care of. And we will also talk a, a little bit about what our architecture looks like and how we have um, actually gone ahead and, and replaced um, NDC with Data Hub. With that said, I'll hand it over to Kevin to talk a little more about the extensible data model needs that we have and the architecture of our system with Data Hub in place. Thanks, Ashwin. So this illustration I have up here is really to show the diversity of the data that we have at Netflix. It's only a subset, but if you can tell some of the different entities, you'll see a workflow, a job, a data set, analytics entities like a metric. These all have very different shapes in the real world. For example, a table will have something like data size where a workflow won't. So 
when we were thinking about evolving NDC to meet the customer's needs in the future, we needed to prioritize extensibility. And that's where Data Hub was really shining for us. We had worked with Acrol over the past year to be able to inject new entities and aspects. And this was perfect for us because it meant that all our customers have to do now is model their domain, model their attributes, and then tell us exactly what they need. From there, uh, um, all we have to do is inject some uh, PDL and YAML into the GMS instance, and we have type safe APIs already. And so when you look at the entity graph, we expect this to grow significantly. So that pattern matched exactly what we wanted here. Yes. And when we talk about the architecture of what this looks like in our backend, so the top layer are the primary clients for the Netflix data catalog or NDC in short. Um, we have the policy engine, Medicat, data portal, the classification and detection systems and other uh, folks related to that. For the most part, everyone will be inter um, interacting with NDC via our GraphQL DGS domain graph query system or through the REST API itself. Now in the back end, where we really made the swap was, well, NDC was purely powered by CockroachDB and a bunch of uh, Java Spring Boot logic in the past. What we wanted out of Data Hub was to replace some of the toil and burden that we had to build and maintain with just integrations with GMS directly. So on the left-hand side of the bottom left of that uh, bigger box, you'll see all NDC does for um, a vast majority of its workflows now is just forward to GMS. Inside GMS, we have um, integrated the new entities, the new aspects, the validators and transformers that we're able to plug in as Java code. And then from there, GMS does the rest for us. And where I'm really excited about this piece is as GMS grows in the open source world, new features, new scalability, all we have to do is upgrade that image and redeploy. For us, it's a minimal maintenance experience. And on top of that, we get to build off of the existing data hub um, graph model, which already exists. Below it on the persistence side, it's uh, fairly standard. We use Aurora MySQL, which is the recommended deployment for GMS and Elasticsearch as the graph backend. And then on the right side where the events flow out, we actually use the MCL events to build change events for our uh, customers who need more near real-time use cases, like for notifications or real-time inventory updating. So the big piece here to focus on is that um, GMS was really just a swap for the persistence layer for us. We don't use Data Hub's UI. We have our own experiences built all around that, uh, nor do we use their uh, consumers quite yet. Um, but for the most part, it's been a pretty straightforward uh, swap for us. So what's next for us? Um, really, the big use case that we see coming down the pipe for our customers where we can deliver a lot of value is relationships on, is the top of our mind. Relationships will allow us to relate entities, but more importantly, propagate metadata from entity to entity. Today, we do more simple inheritance flows like this database will give its ownership to its tables, but we need to do things like this uh, container will pass its owner to this set of tables and of the like. The next piece there is lineage. Um, we want to scale lineage beyond our big data warehouse. We want to include applications. We want to include our real-time data stores and streams. And in order to power that, we think Data Hub can play a part here. We also want to capture column level lineage, which Data Hub supports natively. And the last piece is scale. Uh, like I said, the Netflix data ecosystem is very diverse, both in shape and magnitude. And so we need to push the bounds on how do we manage all the entity and aspect inventory? How do we make sure we can scale to the volume that everything is increasing towards? And of course, all of the query patterns around it. So we're really excited about this piece and we think Data Hub OSS is a perfect fit here. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, with that said, uh, that brings us to the end of our presentation. We would like to thank uh, the Acryl team for providing us with an opportunity uh, to give a talk at this conference. Uh, and for everyone listening, um, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.